Welcome to this rapid revision session on Early Indian Treaties, 1830 to 1851. Okay, this is a pretty chewy topic which takes a little bit of time to get your head around. I'm only going to give you the very basic details here and you might want to do some more detailed revision independently, but I'll keep things as brief as I can. The text is going to be reasonably small, so you might want to play this full screen and in HD to read it. There were a series of key events in this topic that helped shape the development of the USA and how the US federal government treated the Plains Indians. Firstly, on the 28th of May 1830, we have the Indian Removal Act. This forced American Indians in the eastern states to move west of the long Mississippi River. As a result of this, indigenous peoples from the more eastern states were now in the same place, further west. This enabled, on the 13th and 30th of June 1834, the Indian Trade and Intercourse Act. This established a proper frontier between Indian Territory and the United States and its territories. This formalised a border between what was considered Indian land and land that would be colonised by Europeans. Then, on the 2nd of February 1848, the USA won the Mexican-American War. This wasn't directly to do with the Indians, but it did have important effects. The peace treaty of this war involved taking land from Mexico. This Mexican cessation land expanded US territorial claims in the west of the continent, leading to a greater focus on colonising the whole continent. Partly as a result of increased migration across Indian land, there were these two. On the 17th of February 1851, the Fort Laramie Treaty was signed, which formalised diplomatic relations between the US Indians and the US government and got guarantees from, from the Indians in return for payment. Then, on the 29th of February 1851, the Indian Appropriations Act. This law funded the moving of the Indians to reservations in modern-day Oklahoma. While moves to the reservations weren't immediate, it set up the framework whereby Indians would eventually be forced onto reservations and be reliant on government handouts. Let's have a look in a bit more detail, though, at the 1841 Fort Laramie Treaty. This is a really important treaty, but don't confuse it with the 1868 Fort Laramie Treaty, which is not only later, but it's quite a bit different, too. So these are the white-centric and Indian-centric causes of this treaty. In other words, the ones that were sort of related to each side. On the one hand, there was the discovery of gold in California in 1848 that had led to increased migration across Indian land. The gold rush, remember, was in 1849. This put pressure on resources which white migrants used. The US government sought a better way for migrants to travel, including by rail, although this hadn't been built yet. It also increased contact between whites and Indians and could lead to conflict. Indians feared white settlement and disruption to the buffalo and their nomadic way of life. They also feared a attack by migrants, just as the migrants feared attacks by them. And the Indians worried about the pressure on scarce food and water resources if more people moved in. So here are the consequences. Firstly, tribes agreed to appoint people to negotiate with the US government. This led to diplomatic relations in the future. Tribes were allocated land, and this led to reservations. The Indians agreed to allow white migration, leading to increased white, white migration into their land. The Indians agreed to allow railroad surveyors and army posts which led to railroad building and army forts on Indian land. The US government, they agreed to payments and resources for Indian tribes. This led to a loss of Indian independence. And there were sanctions if the Indians broke the treaty. Conflict was the result. Keeping to the treaty was not always possible or wanted. Let's have a look at a couple of maps that show these changes. The pink areas mostly out to the east are the states of the USA as they existed in 1834. Territories which had not yet become states were in orange. Other countries, including Mexico, you can see they have claimed a huge swathe of land over there in the west and the central um, of North America. And there are disputed areas which are being fought over. The Indian frontier is shown in green with Indian territory in a darker orange. In 1830, the US government passed the Indian Removal Act, which we've mentioned previously. This established a frontier between white settled territories and states on Indian lands, and we can see that frontier marked out in green here. This picture is going to change, though. Have a look at this map from 1848. Again, states are shown in pink. Indian territory is still shown in that dark orange. And territories that have not yet necessarily been organised are shown in orange. Those are out to the west. Mexico is still hanging on to a little bit of land down in the south there. The Indian frontier is not marked on here because it has changed. 
By 1848, the USA had become been further reorganized. Some territories had become states by this time, and the USA had won the Mexican-American War. And you get a sense of just how enormous the Mexican cessation was, and with Texas taking over a significant proportion of that as well. So let's compare the two. Which of these statements probably best sums up the two maps? The later map shows Mexico stopped being a country. The maps show that the number of territories got less, the number of states got bigger, and the Indian Territory changed. And the maps show that America became a more organised country with more states. Well, the first bullet point is just wrong. Mexico didn't stop being a country. It was still there. It's just not so much on this second map. But for the next one, the number of territories did get less. They might be bigger, but there were fewer of them. The number of states has got larger, quite substantially larger. And the Indian Territory has changed subtly. Look up there to the kind of central uh, north and central area. The last one is sort of true as well. The map does show that America became a more organised country with more states, but the best fit is probably the middle one. Some final points then. There were a series of ways that the US government began to pass laws against the Plains Indians, or at least impose restrictions upon them. The Indian Removal Act of 1830 forced Indians to move west of the Mississippi. The Indian Trade and Intercourse Act in 1834 formalised a border, the Indian frontier. And the Indian Appropriations Act of 1851 began the process of moving Indians onto the reservations and the final, finally the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851 began to formalise rules Indians had to obey and some financial reliance on the US government. That's the end of this rapid revision session. I hope it's been useful to you. Please like the video if it has and you can always comment with requests on things you'd like me to cover in future rapid revision sessions. Thanks very much for watching and there'll be more videos soon. Goodbye.